It's like walking a dog. So yeah, for this next wind ensemble cycle, I'm on bass saxophone for Lincoln Traposi. I figured we can unpack this thing together and sort of see what we're working with here. Holy cow, the neck is massive. Look at this thing. All right, so I have to be extremely careful with this thing because it's so expensive. It is a Selmer bass sax. Selmer 80 Super Action Series 2. I'm a Yamaha person, so I have no idea what that means. It's a pretty good bass sax, I think. Is any bass sax good? I'm not even sure. So it does have a bass sax mouthpiece, which is the same size as a Barry sax mouthpiece, I'm pretty sure. It just has a different chamber. That's what Dr. Page told me. I'm using a Barry sax Legere 3.5. does have a peg on it that I put there because then I can sit down. I think what I'm gonna do is no neck strap it and hold it like this because that makes the most sense to me rather than putting all the strain on my neck. So for those of you who don't know, this instrument is in B flat, so it's a fifth below the Barry sax. We use it in sax ensemble here quite a bit. Our professional bass sax player in the studio is Imbo Shim. He has a lot of experience playing this. He's played it in sax ensemble the last few years with us. Other than that, it really doesn't get played. There's only a few works that have it, Lincoln Traposi being one of them. Guess what note that was? F. F natural, that's crazy that that's only F. It's making my whole face vibrate so much. It's crazy, this, <laughs> this is a crazy experience. I actually really like it. I don't get to play many low saxes. This is really cool for me. There's like zero tension in the face. It's just like, oh, there's like no embouchure. D is really sharp though. It's also very flexible. Let's look at this music. I don't think it, my part is too involved. I do have quite a bit of notes. Lots of long phrases throughout this. Oh goodness. Okay, let's see how this goes. Movement one, I don't have a whole lot. I play at the very end. It's such long phrases and takes so much air. I don't think I can breathe on the bar line there. It is crazy to think about how much tubing there is before you ever get to a tone hole. Crazy, that's like the length of a soprano sax, all of this. Getting your pinky down from low B to low B flat is crazy. There's no low A key like a Barry sax on here. It'd be really nice if there was just because some of my parts in here, it's very obvious that if there was a low A, there wouldn't be as much jumping around. Like there I jump up to a low A from a, or I jump up to an A to a low, from a low B flat. <laughs> My part actually gets pretty involved in the third movement. I hope it's translating how loud this thing is and how resonant it is. It'll be very interesting playing this in the wind ensemble. Our concert is on October 13th, I think. I'll make sure to like put a live stream link out there on, on YouTube and Instagram if you follow me over there. If you don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead and do that. Also, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe right now. One of the other hard things I'm finding about this, which probably just has to do with low saxes, which I don't really play. I feel like once you add the octave key to anything, it's like super hard to like nail the target, especially like D and E. I'm usually too high.
as you can tell, I've got a long way to go. This thing's really hard. I hope to make a few more videos featuring this thing. If you want to see anything specific with this, then let me know. There's definitely a lot of progress to be made. I have about a week until we start rehearsals. Thanks for following along. I will see you next time. Peace.